what's going on YouTube some reptiles here bringing another video so depending on what order I put these videos in I'll probably put this one first and the second one so I'm going to go over um, baby beard dragon care how I've been taking care of them and um, I'm probably going to do this video backwards and after this video I'm going to kind of introduce you to these beard dragons but first I wanted to give you a video of how I've been taking care of them so as you can see here um, their cage is dirty. I cleaned it yesterday morning. It is now the next day. Um, I think it's like one o'clock. So it's been a day and a few hours since I cleaned them. So they're super messy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean these bad boys. Get all the leftover stuff out. I already started by taking out some of the water bowls and stuff and the food bowl. But as you can see, they're pretty dirty. So what I'm going to do today, since it's been a couple of days, I'm going to go ahead and give these guys a bath. So I'm going to literally just take one out. Let's see, get this guy here. They're so cute. So we're going to grab him. Focus. Maybe not. All right. Grab a little guy, and I already have some warm water right here. If he goes in. All right, so now he's going to get a bath. I'll explain in a second. I'll explain in a second why the baths are important once I get them, uh, you know, all in there. Some of them are a little skittish, as you can see, which is expected from baby beaver dragons. These guys are, I would say, about two and a half weeks old now, give or take. I might add a little thing on the video to tell you exactly how old they are. I just don't know on top of my head. Come on, little guy. All right, I gotta put the camera down real quick to get him off of my hand. Come on. All right, so I'm just gonna leave the video right here while I go grab the other two real quick. All right. So as you can see, that they're all in the bath now. So I'm gonna go over why the baths are pretty important. So the baths are important for many reasons. One, as you might be able to tell, I have really bad lighting. Hold on, let me put the light on. That might help a little bit. So the baths are really important because they, um, first of all, as you might be able to see, like on this guy right here, how his tail is, oh, I can't really point, it's hard, um, different color than his body, like drastically. It's because his tail is shedding. So the bath is going to help him with the humidity. To help get the shed off easily. They don't technically need any humidity to get their shed off. They're desert animals. They're, they come from a dry area. So you don't want to keep their tanks humid. That's why the baths are kind of good. And that way they get the humidity and, you know, soak in the water. But then they're out of the humidity right after I put them back in their cage. And they can go bask and whatnot. Second reason is none of these guys are doing it right now, surprisingly. But they will uh, drink. Oh. So uh, one thing I do watch since I do uh, multiples, usually I do one per tub. Just right now for the sake of the video, I'm just going to put all four and then we'll go on to the next step. And I can kind of show you everything a little bit quicker. If you do put multiple, make sure they're not dunking each other's heads down. On the video. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my vacuum. I'm going to vacuum all this loose poop and stuff off, like the bricks and whatnot. And then I'm going to wipe down the bricks as best I can. It's really hard with bricks to actually, you can get the poop off and everything and sanitize it, but it's real hard to actually get the stains off. So it kind of always looks dirty. So these bricks are real cheap. I think they're less than a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty if at most. So I just switch them out every couple weeks or months or whatever, whenever they get bad. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Vacuum the carpet, vacuum the loose poop. Clean off the everything, make sure they're not uh, dirty and everything sanitized. And I'll pick the video up back after that. Before I do that, real quick, another reason why the baths are pretty important is because they help promote poop. So as you can see here, if someone poops in there, it's one less poop that's going to be in the tank. Now I'm going to try to get these guys out real fast because that water is dirty now. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go do the stuff I said I'm going to do, get these guys out, and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so as you can see, um, we're back. It's a little bit cleaner. 
I did clean the bricks off um, pretty well, but as you can see, there's still a bunch of stains. So what I'm going to do probably tomorrow when I clean um, is bring them outside and give them a good spread off with the hose and scrub them down with like a sponge or something. That way it gets the stains off. Granted, it is pretty clean and I cleaned it off, sanitized it, whatnot, let it dry. And, uh, you know, wiped it down. But, um, but yeah, so it's clean. Now, the next step I did was I add, re-added, I took them out before the video, but I also have a water bowl. It's a really shallow uh, pot dish. And I also have a bowl where I put, usually have collard greens and kale and the greens, fruits, and veggies in there. This is where I also dump the uh, calcium powder, vitamin powder, and the bugs when I put them in, just so they get on there. <clears throat> so, um, what I did this morning when I first woke up is I turned on the lights, and I usually go down and grab some... Uh, veggies some greens whatever i have at the time whatever i feel like grabbing and um today i did a uh, collard green so i already did this this morning but i figured i would just uh, you know like kind of go over it again see if they kind of go for it they might not since they already ate this morning but um it's actually time for them to have their crickets or roaches whatever i'm giving today so i'm going to try this just to show you how i do it and then we'll move on to the actual you know to the next part so what I usually do is I want to make sure that they all get their greens since it's super important. Babies don't really uh, necessarily eat the greens if you just kind of like keep them in the dish. So what I do is I cut them into string pieces. Actually, I don't even cut them. The bag of collard greens I get kind of like this. So they kind of look like a worm. And then I'll literally just go in. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'll just go in. Try to make it seem like it's a worm. Let me just try the dirty cage. I wanted to keep it a clean cage, but just to show you, there we go. That's usually what happens. Is there go, and I've easily been able to. But anyway, you get the point. I hand feed them all the collard greens. Make sure that they um, they all have a little bit of it. That way they all get the nutrients. And when I say collard greens, I mean any kind of greens I'm feeding. Mustard greens, collard greens, kale um you know etc veggies any of the fruits carrots whatnot so the next step i'm going to fill their veggie bowl even though they usually don't eat from it i like to keep some in there and then i'm going to go ahead and grab some crickets today i'm going to feed crickets and we'll put some in see if they're hungry they don't really seem like they're too hungry today so yeah i'm going to put the crickets in and then uh we'll move on from there we'll talk about uh We'll talk about the lighting and UVB, the heat, and whatnot um, next. All right, see if I can do this with one hand. So I have crickets, and I put some calcium and vitamin powder in there, so they're dusted. Shake them around a little bit. These are medium crickets. I started with small. I switched to medium the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in there. Put them right on top of the greens. That way, any of the powders that fall off go on the greens. And as you can see, they're going after him. We've got to make sure this little guy doesn't bother him. I always supervise the feeding when there's multiple. You should always, one thing I should mention, for any like newbies out there or reptiles that might not know. So I bred these guys. These are babies that I hatched out. It is the only reason why I have four to a cage and three cages, 12 babies total. There's literally no way I would be able to forge 12 cages with the 12 heat bulbs, 12 UVB bulbs. Plus all the rusty carpets or paper towels and the bricks and hives and stuff. So that's why I have four to a cage. Um, most of them, a lot of them are going to be for sale soon and be sold. So they'll probably end up with like two to a cage. And then once it's two to a cage, um, they're probably like the six I have left that I'm thinking about keeping. I'm going to keep one or two. Once that happens, I have two to a cage. I'm going to get a upgrade to 20 gallons or so 40 gallons and they'll have more space and then i can take my time selling them sell the rest of them and then i'll have depending on how many i keep i'll have one per 40 gallon cage at the end so i don't recommend keeping four to a cage um it's end up it's a lot more work anyway if you keep because like right now when the crickets are in the cage i have to supervise make sure they're not biting each other's tails or fighting over anything they're always really good and never had any issues yet but keyword is yet so that's why some of these are going to be sold real soon. That way I can diminish the population. It won't be as many per cage and it'll be less stress. 
So I just wanted to throw it out there. I do not recommend housing multiple reptiles, especially bearded dragons, even if they are both female, because they do get big and they get hurt each other pretty bad. One could bully the other, the other take all the food and nutrients and everything. So that goes over the food. I feed uh, the crickets, dubia roaches, super worms, some every once in a while, mealworms as a treat. I have um, this uh, rapashi bearded dragon dry food that you mix with water, make like a paste kind of. I'm gonna try out, I try to give much variety, collard greens, kale, strawberries, blueberries, grapes, mustard greens, um, squash, carrots, um, Pretty much you can look up online, just Google safe foods for bearded dragons and just try to feed as many of those different things as you can. Water bowls for my adult bearded dragons. I don't even have a water bowl in the cage. <clears throat> they get most of their water intake from one, the vegetables and fruits and the greens that you give. And two, from the baths that you give them. Usually when you put them in the bath, they'll drink. Since I have the babies, I put a water, a shallow water dish just so they don't get dehydrated. I also spray them um, once a day, twice a day to make sure that they're, you know, getting enough water and they're not dehydrated. You can put a water bowl in the adult bearded dragons. Their dad, the male I have, actually will drink from a water bowl. But their mom will. I've never seen the mom drink from still water unless they're in the bath. So that's kind of on you. I recommend um, if you're a first time reptile owner, put the water bowl in. Just make sure they can't drown in the amount that's in there. Just to be cautious. And then you can kind of go from there. If you notice they're not even touching it or drinking it or they're just pooping in it. but And they're eating their fruits and veggies. Make sure they're actually eating their fruits and veggies. Then you don't have to worry about it as much. But like I, like I always say in all my video guys, make sure you do other research besides just this one video. Look up a lot of videos. There's a lot of people who've been doing it a lot longer and have a lot more following and stuff that can give you probably better advice right now than I can. But this is something to supplement maybe another video that you might have seen. Because I know when I first got into reptiles, I just watched every single video and kind of gathered all the information and figured out exactly how I wanted to take care of my particular animal. Next thing we're going to go over is lighting. As you can see here, I have one lamp that has a basking bulb you probably can't see 100 watt basking bulb um for the hot spot and i also have this strip light back here Let's see if you can see it i don't know if that looked at anything i kind of just shoved my arm under there but um that's the uvb so that strip runs across all three cages uvb's light pretty much replicates the sun and all the stuff that the bearded dragons would naturally get from the sun in the wild. So it's most singly most important thing um, for a bearded dragon. Whether they are babies, adults, growing, not growing. They all need the same amount of UVB. It's the most important. It's not debatable. They get high concentrations of UVB in the wild. Like super high. So we try to replicate that in captivity. By providing a lot of UVB. Um, I'm probably going to get another strip here soon. Where... Um, like a longer one and it'll just be they'll run both strips on the cages just to give them the extra uvb and then the heat obviously makes the hot spot um warm so they can bask and digest and everything else they do in the heat warm up since they are cold-blooded um i have it kind of like ghetto rigged on my little setup here i just have it higher up so that part's not too hot you want to keep it from anywhere from now, this is debatable. People say different things. I would say the safest thing is to keep it around 90 to 95, maybe. Some people say you go 100, 110, 120, 130. I just don't see the necessity. Um, I just don't see how that would be, you know, any more helpful than at 95 or 100. I would think just 95 would just be safer. But to each your own. Like I said, do your research. I keep mine around 90 degrees, 95. My adults are usually around 90, 95 as well. You can also buy, like, uh, I think Z-Med sells it. It's like a stand, like a legit metal stand. Oh, shit. A legit metal stand that you can put the lamp onto that holds the lamp. So it's not as ghetto. Or if you don't have, like, a pull that's sticking out of your setup like that that you put a lamp on, you can buy something that's legit for it. And it's not that expensive. I just haven't done it yet. I'm going to want to upgrade their cages and sell some of them off here in the next couple of days. So we have cleaning, lighting, um, food, water, 
heat bulbs, UVB bulbs. I think I kind of went over everything for the most part. This is going to be like a simple carry, even though the video is 17 minutes as of now before editing. Um, I'm trying to think of other things to mention. Care wise, um, you saw the baths. Um, I guess if you want to go over our handling real quick. As you can see, they're kind of jumpy at first when they're first babies. But usually once they're on your hand like this, they usually won't move. They'll just chill. It's just actually getting them to go onto your hand at first. So you do that once, twice a day, every day. Start slow, you know, build up on the process to get them used to you. And eventually they'll trust you and they won't be so jumpy. And of course, once they're adults, as you probably know, beer dragons are really chill. They don't move as much. So, you know, just got to work with them and eventually they'll get there. Um, real quick, I'm going to go over some things to expect. They eat a lot of bugs. They don't really eat a lot of greens at first. Because sometimes they don't eat greens at all. You got to transition them to try to do it, which I think my worm, the collard greens shaped like a worm method kind of helps a little bit in that regard. So they think it's a bug, but in actuality, they get the hydration and the vitamins, minerals from the collard greens. Um, they poop a lot. Like you saw the cage before, you see this cage right now. Granted, I have four to a cage, but this is literally like 24 hours of mess for four of them. If I would have fed them now without cleaning them and came back in a couple hours, it would be double as messy. They poop a lot. Um, the collard greens get everywhere. They step on their poop and they put the poop everywhere, which is really gross. Got to make sure everything is sanitized. Uh, so sanitize the sides. And when I cleaned earlier, that was like a spot clean. So what I do when I spot clean is I just vacuum all the mess up, get all the poop, you know, out. And then maybe I'll wipe down the sides with some water or something so it's visible. So, you know, so you see in and out if there's too many water marks or whatnot. What I will do tomorrow is a deep clean. I'll take the bricks and the hides out, spray them with the hose, it's like high pressure water. Maybe use some soap, some like safe uh, Dawn's dish soap or something. You know, let it air dry out there. And then I'll also grab, um, I'll also sanitize the whole tank as well. And sometimes I even take this outside and scrub it, the repti carpet, or I throw it in the washer. If I do like all the repti carpets I have at once, and just throw it in the washer with some soap. Some Dawn dish soap, you know, clean and help disinfect it. So you expect them to eat a lot, expect them to poop a lot. Um, you also, the babies seem to move around a lot, but the adults don't move that much. So you expect uh, just a, a real chill reptile. You don't have to worry too much about. They are, they are easy to care. As far as other reptiles go, they are kind of a pain in the ass as far as, you know, you're cleaning every day. You're giving them veggies and fruits and cutting carrots and whatnot every day. You got to worry about the two different light sources. But once you kind of get all the basics down, it's actually really simple. Really, really simple. It just takes some time. But some people prefer. Some people like to be hands-on with their reptiles. And if you like to be hands-on, I highly recommend getting one of these little guys. Because they're awesome. So, hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. If there's anything I missed that you'd like to add, just uh, comment down below. Um, as always, hopefully the video is not too long. It's 20 minutes now, but hopefully I get it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to do the introduction of the Baby Beta Dragons next video. I'm going to have some other videos. I'm going to have some ball python care videos, leopard gecko care videos, um, kind of update videos, future plan videos. I got a bunch of, uh, you know, brewing. So hopefully you'll see some more videos come here in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.